We're going to use Excel to calculate a beta for General Electric stock here and we're going to do it two different ways. We're going to use a chart and plot a line of best fit on that chart and pull the equation from that line. And then we're going to use the slope function in Excel as well. The first thing that we want to do is pull a market return for calculating betas. And so we're going to use the S&P 500 and the ticker symbol in Yahoo. We want to go to finance.yahoo.com is hat GSPC. It's an odd ticker symbol, but that's what Yahoo uses for the S&P 500. We're going to click on get quotes. We're going to go to historical prices. And we're going to pick prices back to 2010, so February 20th, say, 2010. Let's go ahead and get three years worth of data. We're going to use daily data, so we're going to hit this daily radio button. Had we wanted weekly or monthly prices, then we would, of course, hit the weekly or monthly radio button, but we're going to use daily data. Pull the prices. by hitting get price uh, get prices and download those to the spreadsheet we'll download those to a spreadsheet and op open it in Microsoft Excel and here we have the data for the S&P 500 I'll make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see we're going to use in all of this the adjusted close not the open the high the low or the close we want the adjusted close because the adjusted close already has dividends corrected and stock splits corrected now that doesn't matter for the S&P 500 because those aren't reported but when we get to GE's data it does matter so we want to always use adjusted close prices for simplicity it makes the world a whole lot easier when calculating betas now let's go back to Yahoo and pull the GE data so go to GE ticker symbol get quotes historical prices February 20th 2013 daily prices get those prices whoops let's go to 2010 get prices download those to the spreadsheet and notice we have again for General Electric open high low close we want the adjusted close let's highlight that whole column control C for copy go over here to our table that has the adjusted closes for the S&P 500 shift insert or edit paste that gives us GE and I'm going to go ahead and label these just so that it's clear uh, S&P 500 and GE prices now what we'd like to do is we'd like to calculate returns you can't calculate betas off of prices so I'm going to calculate the return for the S&P 500 and of course remember that returns are the new price divided by the old price minus one the new price divided by the old price minus one that's important that you get that correct if you do it upside down you're going to calculate your betas all wrong as well they're going to they're be a negative one over or whatever but uh, we can do this calculation again just copy this over for GE and now we're going to copy these calculations all the way down to the end of our data wherever that is and so now we have daily stock returns for three years now the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a chart that has these stock returns on there so we can see the relationship between GE's return and the S&P 500's return the easiest way to do this is to have your data set up so that the x-axis is on the left in our case we want the S&P 500 to be on the x-axis that's very important to remember as well so the market return is on the x-axis the stock return is going to be on the y-axis and we do have it set up that way the S&P 500 return is on the x-axis it's on the left the stock return is on the right highlight that whole area except for our very last divided by zero error because we don't have um, because we don't have one more data piece so you can't calculate a return for that very last day we're gonna click on insert 
scatter plot. Always use a scatter plot in finance. Never use a line plot in finance. Scatter plots are very important because scatter plots assume that the stuff on your x axis is numbers as opposed to just categorical variables. We want to use numbers on the x axis, and uh, stock returns are, in fact, numbers. So always use a scatter plot. And notice we have now a nice scatter plot of GE stock return versus the market return on the x-axis. Now we would like to have an equation for this line of best fit as well, and we're going we're gonna to calculate that right now. But notice there's an overall upward slope to this, which is because GE has an overall uh, positive, positive beta. All right, now the best way to do this, the easiest way to do this in a chart, is to go over here and notice that Excel has come up with chart tools because the chart is, is selected. We've got design, layout, and format. Under design, we have several chart layouts here. Yes, under, well, we can actually find that a couple of different places, but the easiest way to do this is under chart layouts. Well, let's page down a little bit and notice that uh, there's one here that's got a line on it and a little function symbol up there. Click on that and what it does is it automatically puts in a line of best fit and the equation that describes that line of best fit. And in this case the equation that describes GE's return versus the market's return is GE's return is equal to 1.175 multiplied by the market return plus a very small number 0 0.0002 and there's r squared as a measure of how good this equation fits and it fits pretty doggone well. Uh, GE's uh, return is very closely related to S&P 500 return partly because GE is a major component of the S&P 500 but nonetheless that's that's what GE's beta would be calculated relative to the market uh, as proxied by the S&P 500. 1.175. Now there is an easier way to do this and that's a good thing because this is a little bit cumbersome to put in a, in a, in a chart every time you want to calculate a beta. Instead we can use the slope function. I'm going to do that over here in column L row 19 just below the chart. Uh, I'm going to use the slope function and that's entered by equal S-L-O-P-E. That's the slope function. And the way the slope function works is it calculates it calculates the regression coefficients, and it gives us you, you start off with known y's. All right, in this case, remember the General Electric returns are the y variables, and so we want to go down, highlight all of those except for the division by zero, type in a comma. Notice I've typed in a comma up here, and then we want to highlight the S&P 500 returns because those are the x variables and see how well it's it's disappeared now let's go back up here to the function uh, it was prompting for the x variable second and when I press return or enter we're gonna get the slope of that line of best fit just like we did with the chart and that is also 1.17504 so the beta for General Electric is 1.17504 and it can be easily calculated in either of two ways. One using a chart and selecting a line of best fit and the equation for it or alternately or easier using the slope function and I'll double click on that slope function right there so that you can see what the formula is for our, uh, our example here.